but in general, the general statement is every asana should be felt in your muscles. And this is a real challenge for, for people, is to learn to feel the muscle in every asana. And then the next step, even more challenging, is to learn the difference between is this a stretch or a contraction. Most, most people in yoga only use the term stretch. I'm stretching my hamstrings. So that means that the opposite muscles are getting weak. Right? Ideal is to feel the contraction and the stretch. Yeah? Yeah. That's more advanced yoga. Can you feel in Trikonasana your quadriceps contracting equal to the sensation of your hamstring stretching? You want to write that one down. Yeah, say that again. Here's the challenge in all asana. Can you feel the muscle stretching? That's usually pretty easy, right? Find the muscle stretching. So you're doing Jonar Shirshasan. Clearly stretching my hamstring and my back. All right. But can I shift my attention to feeling quadriceps contracting, hip flexors contracting, and the front body contracting? See? Is that one? Here's, here's, here's I'm only feeling stretch, right? See my posture? Mm -hmm. I feel nothing but stretch when I do this. But I, if I shift my attention into contraction, look at the difference. Watch. Mm -hmm. Now I feel both. My quadriceps both low and my hip flexors high. My trunk is lengthening and toning. My latissimus is engaged here. It's stretched. Mm -hmm. Now it's strong. It changes the posture radically. That's advanced Hatha Yoga. Is to do that. Needs to be able to translate that and say that's not good. Or it is good. Right? Because if your student's got sciatica and they say, I feel this in my hamstring, is that good? Hello? No. 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 Correct. You should not stretch hamstrings if you've got sciatica. General statement. But the translation is, can you feel that in your body? A lot of people with sciatica can't feel their body. It's too numbed out from, from this herniated disc or what other issue might cause it. So the teacher needs to be able to look at the student and ask the student, here's here my dialogue again, ask the student, what do they feel? That's a huge shift in consciousness. Instead of coming to them and pushing on them, what does that do? All, all that makes you do is you feel it more, and you might get injured. But consciousness to introspection. What do I feel? The next question is, should I be feeling that? <laughs> Right? That's the discernment the teacher needs to be working with. So for teachers, when you do my practice, figure, figure out that dialogue to yourself. Should I be feeling this? Question what you feel. In some cases, you should feel your hamstrings. In some cases, no, you don't want to. So the optimal teacher will create choice in the student. That's, that's called higher consciousness, right? Isn't it higher consciousness to have option? This is like, it, this is life, you know, if you, if you are in a, a relationship situation where you feel you have no choice, what's your asana going to look like? Shitty. The same thing. If you 
live your life without choices. That's what your asana and pranayama practice looks like. This is huge. This is, this is the kind of shift that I've been seeing in my students. Is they don't come to me and ask about Jana Shirshasana. They come to me and ask about how can I relax in this relationship. Which is the same thing translated from the body to the greater sphere of their community. Is what I see in yoga, is yoga is revealing the whole of your life. You know, we know when someone's mind is closed, the body is closed. You open up the breath to be deeper and lower, that's going to make people feel feelings they don't want to feel, or they haven't felt. <laughs> 